For 2013, Specialized reinvented the Enduro bike, uh, a bike that's been around since 1999. This model is perhaps one of the greatest bikes anybody's ever produced. But before it even hit the sales shelves, Specialized have got a new version of it with 29 inch wheels. It seems peculiar to put such big wheels in this, uh, in this package. So we're here to find out how they've done that, but more importantly, why? <laughs> People thought it was going to be impossible to make a long travel bike in 29, but we took the challenge, hey, can we make a 160 travel bike that handles like a 26er? One of the main things for us is a short chain stay, and that's uh, one of the hallmark features of specialized bikes, is we have low bottom brackets and short chain stays. And sure, you could build a 29er Enduro with this travel uh, by just putting on a long chain stay, but we didn't want to do that. So our chain stays on this bike are a tick under 430, and our 26-inch uh, bike is a little over 420, so it's less than 10 millimeters longer than the 26-inch bike. And with the uh, offset-adjusted forks and the head tube angle, the geometry is going to handle almost exactly like a 26-inch bike. But where does that demand come from? And, and, and not to be antagonistic, but a lot of people love the Enduro on 26. It's playful, that, that classic specialized feel in, in which people associate right or wrong with 26. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone say, I want a 29er Enduro. So is that like internal? Did you hear people and where does it come from? Uh, we heard enough people say they want it, uh, but also internally. You know, if a 29 inch wheel has the benefits that people believe it does, and why wouldn't you put it on a long travel package? So far there's been a long list of excuses. Well, it, it, you can't fit it on there. The chain stays have to be too long. Um, the wheel isn't strong enough or stiff enough. Um, the geometry is compromised. So if we could put the better rolling wheel on a bike that didn't compromise any of those other factors, then uh, it seemed like a valid project for us. One of the main things we had to do is address the front derailleur. We partnered with SRAM to come up with a simple front derailleur alternative. Now this front derailleur uh, mounts to the chain stay, so it rotates with the rear triangle like most of our bikes do. And what we did is we took the existing lowest profile shifting mechanism that was available and developed a different way to mount it to the frame. So we have this plate right here, which is a very lightweight removable plate, and the derailleur mounts right to that. And SRAM partnered with us and they made a couple custom parts uh, to allow us to do this derailleur. So is this gonna be a specialized proprietary deal? It's not proprietary. The front derailleur can be purchased by, uh, by anyone who sees the benefit in it and wants to apply it to their, to their design. Well, in this day and age, you can go through hundreds and hundreds of virtual revisions before you get to the real thing. So there's no drawings that change hands, there's no napkin sketches. I can get the 3D model probably 90% of the way there. Then we build two or three mules before we start doing the, the actual tool. So it's a fast process. I mean, we delivered this entire line of Enduros in a year and a half's time. Um, we, we probably put, you know, three years worth of products into a year and a half's time. So for me, I work mostly on the long travel stuff, and uh, so virtually everything in my garage is 26 inch. And uh, now that I have the option of both an Enduro 26 and an Enduro 29 hanging on my wall, I'm finding, finding it difficult to grab the 26 because I know the 29er is going to roll better in most cases, and it gets over the bumps and it's smoother. And I don't mind a, a little bit more weight. Enduro is all about having fun anyway, so I'm always taking my time getting to the top as it is. Uh, it's just much more fun and I feel a little bit more safer and confident uh, on, on the basic trails around here, so I usually grab the 29. Obviously, from a design perspective, it's gotta be easier to shoehorn a 27.5 wheel in there. Why did you guys go to 29 instead? Uh, 650B, of course, would be easier to put on this platform, but you don't get the full benefit of uh, the 29er rollover effect. So if you're going all in, you should go 29er. If you want a faster rolling wheel, go all the way to 29. And since we didn't have to compromise anything else on the frame to squeeze it in there, uh, 650B felt like a compromise because it wasn't the maximum uh, rollover and traction uh, that the 29er would provide. 